Well, good evening, Conroe ISD family. My name is Curtis Null, the superintendent of Conroe ISD. We appreciate you joining us tonight. This is our COVID-19 March 16th update, 6 p.m. update. Um, we want to try to keep our time straight as we go on. Thank you for joining us on Facebook Live. Uh, I know that many of you have mentioned that not everybody has Facebook and how will they receive this information. We are also recording this information and it will be available on our YouTube channel as well. So if you have friends and family that maybe aren't on, on Facebook and they're not able to see this message tonight, uh, rest assured that we will get them that information. Um, let me start by saying uh, I hope you and your family are well. Um, this is certainly uh, a difficult time in our community. It is something that none of us expected and we're uh, learning as we go in many ways um, through this situation. I want to say a big thank you to uh, all of our people that work in the hospitals, that are working in clinics, uh, to help keep us safe. Special thanks to our first responders that put themselves um, in harm's way as they work through um, this each day. And also want to say thank you to those folks in retail that are working in grocery stores to help make sure that we have all the resources we need as families. Um, when I began to think about tonight, uh, we actually planned this on Saturday. And our goal was to come to you and just bring you an update as to what's going on in the school district and how we were cleaning and how we were preparing to come back to school, um, hopefully very soon. Um, as has been the case, things have changed very quickly. And so tonight I decided that I wouldn't write a script. Um, part of that is because uh, it has changed so quickly even this afternoon. Uh, but the second part of that is I've never had to have a script to talk to family and I didn't think I needed to start that tonight. Um, I do consider us all a part of the Conroe ISD family. Uh, I'm not only proud to serve as your superintendent, but I live in this community. I'm the husband of a teacher in this community and I'm the parent of a child in this community like so many of you are. So um, this is personal for me. Um, we love having school. We love having your children in school each day. And so anytime that we have to make decisions that change that, uh, it's heartbreaking for us and we understand all the ramifications that are associated with that. We will be sending out uh, a message tonight. Uh, you may have received it by email already. If not, you will receive it soon. Um, that we have changed our school closure plan. Uh, you received a message last week that we would be closed for this week of school. That has now changed and it changed this afternoon. Um, throughout the day today, I've had many conversations. My morning started with a conversation with our county judge uh, as they made their change um, from gatherings of 250 people or less. They followed the CDC recommendations to recommend that gatherings um, are now 50 people or less. Uh, now, while we weren't bound by that as a school district, certainly um, we paid attention to their recommendation. Additionally, I had a conversation with the Montgomery County Hospital District CEO to get his advice on what he felt like we needed to do to help stop the spread of COVID-19 in our community and keep not only our students, our parents safe, but the community at large safe. Uh, this afternoon, I followed that up with a conference call with all the superintendents in the greater Houston area. Um, they were receiving similar information from their county judge and their health experts about the needs of schools to close for a longer duration in order to protect our community. Uh, later this afternoon, I met with the via conference call with the other superintendents in Montgomery County, and we all came to the same conclusion, and this message is being shared um, throughout the Houston area tonight to schools, that uh, public schools in the greater Houston area will be closed through April 10th. Our goal will be to return to school on April 13th. Um, that will be the Monday after Easter, um, we will reevaluate this plan on April 6th. Um, we'll once again be seeking the advice of the healthcare experts on the state and national level. Um, in addition to um, all the way up to President Trump, he gave the direction today that, that we took notice of. Um, we will get all of that information again on April 6th to decide if April 13th is still a viable start date. But for today, that is our goal. Uh, it was not, uh, as I said, it was not my intention to have breaking news tonight uh, in, this, in this Facebook Live feed. We really wanted to just share information with you and uh, we're gonna have more opportunities on Facebook Live in the coming weeks to share information. But I know that this news tonight um, is startling for many of you. Uh, 
it brings a lot of questions and it doesn't come without ramifications throughout the community and we understand that. Uh, we know that when we close schools, uh, it can be a burden on parents and it can be uh, a burden on the economy. We understand that well. Um, but when I receive information as a superintendent of schools from the county judge and from our healthcare experts that tell us that closing school is what can keep our community safe and they urge us to do that, I can assure you that any of you in my seat would make the same decision. If we make a decision to keep schools closed one day too long or one week too long, we know there are ramifications for that and, and they are real. I don't minimize those. But if we make the decision to keep schools closed one day too short or one, or one week too short, the ramifications are just um, something that I can't live with in that situation. Uh, at this point, uh, we want everyone in our community to be safe and healthy, and that's our focus. Uh, immediately when we talk about school closure, the first thing that comes um, to my mind, the mind of our team, is how do we address the needs of our students that rely on us for food service? We have uh, almost 30,000 students that rely on free or reduced lunch. Uh, you may have seen a message from us that we um, are working to feed those students. Our first uh, food distribution will be tomorrow. It's at 10 different sites. We have a Facebook post. You, you could find it on our Facebook page uh, to find those locations. But you can go and, and find those and we'll be delivering meals to students. The most heartwarming thing that I've seen, it just makes me so proud to live and serve in this community, uh, is when we made that post a few days ago, we immediately had a flood of people wanting to volunteer um, to serve others in that capacity. And I say thank you for that. Uh, it was amazing. And in these, these last weeks, when, when it seems like every bit of news that I've received has been uh, somewhat bad news, to see that really made a difference. Um, and I'm so proud of our community. Now, what I will say is uh, our goal in that curbside meal delivery service is to keep everyone uh, separated. We want that social distancing. And we can't achieve that if we had 200 volunteers show up to each site. So while I say thank you for wanting to be a volunteer, know that um, we may not be reaching out to you for tomorrow or even Thursday, but we might need you in the future. Um, so I would say, please don't just show up tomorrow to volunteer. If you've not been um, asked or invited by a principal of the uh, distribution site, if you would please um, not show up uh, on tomorrow. And then hopefully we'll get, we'll get you an opportunity to be involved because I know you care and you wanna show that uh, to people in our community. Uh, there are a lot of groups also that um, we feel for in this situation. And one of them is our seniors the class of 2020. And I'm sure some of you are online watching today. Um, parents, I'm sure you're, you're online watching. And we know the impact of the senior year. As a former high school principal, uh, I can tell you that I always enjoyed and celebrated that senior year with students. Our, our sincere hope and goal is that this move today stops the spread of this disease in our community. And if it would allow us to come back to school on April 13th, Hopefully it gives us a chance to still maintain those great senior events that are in the future for us in May. I can't make promises today about proms or graduations, but what I heard from our healthcare experts in our community is that if we didn't do something now to try to stop this, there was no doubt that we would have no proms and no graduations this year because of this virus. So this move is a proactive move and hopefully it will protect those events. Once again, I can't make that promise. As quickly as things have changed over these last few weeks, uh, it's impossible for me to make a promise to you uh, right now. But, but I do want you to know that we understand how important they are. And if we have to make changes to those events, we'll do everything we can to make sure that they are as special as they deserve to be because you've worked for 13 years to get to this point and we want to celebrate you. Uh, employees, I want to speak to you for a moment. I'm sure that many of you are online with us as well. Um, thank you for your service. And, and I know that these times are hard. Um, as teachers, we love spring break. Well, I will tell you, parents, it's a great um, rejuvenating week for us. But what we really love about spring break is coming back and finishing the year strong. And so when we take that opportunity away from our staff, 
um, it, it puts them into a little bit of a spiral. I've seen many comments, I've had many emails uh, over the last few days from teachers that really just wanna have kids in the building and I understand that and I want them there too as soon as it's safe to have them there. But employees, what I, I want you to know is um, we will, uh, I'm gonna ask the board tomorrow night during our board meeting to authorize me to continue um, all employee payments um, throughout this closure. So I don't want you to be worried about if you're being paid or not. Um, we, will, we will continue to pay our employees throughout this closure. Now, this week our buildings are closed. That means that we are limiting who travels in and out of our buildings and we have essential staff working um, to, just to maintain our buildings, maintain our buses, uh, but we're not in the buildings. As we transition into the future, next week becomes really what will be our new normal for about the next month. And that will be uh, no students in the buildings, but learning will occur. We, we want learning for our students um, to continue. And, and that's a non-negotiable for us. And how we will do that, um, that's a challenge. And, and I will tell you, we've had people working on that starting last week. We had groups today working diligently uh, to come up with plans and that work will continue over the next three or three or four days and you will begin to hear parents from your child's school, if you have not already, by Thursday with a plan of how they're gonna help you help your child learn when they're not in the school building. That will take many different shapes and forms, um, depending upon the age level, um, where you live, how you might best receive information. We are well aware of the fact that everyone in our community does not have internet and does not have access to electronic devices. We are aware of that. My pledge to you is that we are going to make sure that every student in Conroe ISD has equal access to the learning opportunities. If, if we have families out there that do not have internet, do not have electronic devices, we will find other ways to serve them and get information to them. Uh, you will get more information from your schools. They will be the primary delivery uh, source for that information moving forward. Um, one of the other big pieces of news that came out today is, is Governor Abbott um, made a declaration that there will be no star testing for this year. Um, we welcome that. Our, you know, our goal is to come back to school on April 13th, and as we return to school, we do not want to lose weeks uh, going into testing mode. We want to get right back into the classroom and the teaching and learning. And so we appreciate the governor uh, understanding the importance of that teaching and learning and um, doing away with the star testing requirements for this year. And so um, that will have ramifications into the future. For example, if you are a freshman this year and you're sitting in Algebra 1, you won't have the opportunity to take the Algebra 1 EOC at the end of this year. Um, and so that test will be waived for you during your high school career is what we were informed today by the commissioner. So there'll be more information on that into the future uh, as we continue to move forward. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about our remote learning that's going to occur over these next few weeks. Um, first, let me ask for your patience with us. Uh, this is gonna be very new for us and what we do. Uh, we have the best teachers in the state of Texas and they are gifted at what they do, but what we are asking them to do right now is to change their way of thinking completely and how they interact and deliver information to children to make a complete 180. And it may take us a little time to get this perfected. So please be patient with us. Um, give us a little grace as we move forward, but know that we are going through and choosing foundational curricular components. Those things that your students need to know for this year and what will be um, very key components for them to have for next year's learning as well. And that will be our focus uh, as we move forward with the curriculum. Uh, as I said, we're going we're gonna to pay special um, attention to make sure that every student has equal opportunity to receive that information. And if you have a child that receives special education services, know that they will continue to receive uh, special services through this program as well. It may look very differently than what it has looked like in the classroom, but know that um, we understand their needs and we will continue to serve them. Um, at this time, I'm gonna uh, invite uh, Ms. Barbara Robertson to join us. She is our um, Director of Health in Conroe ISD. She's a registered nurse. Uh, and we are so blessed to have her. She has been involved in many conversations uh, in the last week with medical experts, and I'll let her tell you who she, who she talks with, but 
uh, she receives much information. And while, while Barbara is sharing information with you about how to keep you and your family healthy, uh, I'm going to pick up maybe a few questions that, that have come in through the chat and see if I can answer those before we wrap up, but know that we'll have more opportunities like this in the future. So, Ms. Robertson. So, first and foremost, we want to assure people that now is not the time to panic. Now is the time to make decisive and deliberate actions to stop the spread of COVID-19 in our communities, but it's not time to panic. We have to remember that research is, says that 80% of the illnesses will only cause mild symptoms, but what we also need to remember is that the other 20% may have more severe illnesses. So we need to be proactive in protecting that other 20%, those that may have underlying health conditions such as uh, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, or immunocompromised. And it's all of our duties to protect our community and our families. We can do that with some simple measures. Right now, social distancing is a very big issue, and that is giving three to six foot space between you and others, not gathering in large crowds. Stay home if you're sick. If you're sick, you need to go ahead and call your physician and um, make arrangements with them. Just don't show up at the doctor's office. Um, if you are out, then make sure that you're washing your hands um, often. Don't touch your face um, and, uh, and make sure that you are protecting others. The latest research is that the droplets can stay on a surface such as stainless steel or plastic for up to three days after it's been deposited. So after three days, if someone that has sneezed or coughed and now you touch that door handle, then you touch your face, then that's how that is transmitted. So we wanna make sure that you have the best resources available for this information. We talk daily with Montgomery County Hospital District. Uh, the Texas Department of State Health Services has a conference call every day, and we participate in that to get the latest information and also daily updates from the CDC. Um, you can get links through um, Conroe ISD's Health Services webpage to all of those and also to the Montgomery County Public Health District. They have a, a website that is uh, full of information. I would ask all of you to go to those authoritative sites and uh, for your information and not rely on uh, other information posts that may not be um, accurate. So for those that may have an underlying health condition, we want to make sure that you understand the research is not that you are at a greater risk of getting it, but that you are at greater risk of having a severe complication if you do. So uh, the CDC is advising all of those that may have a underlying health condition to stay home, stay away from other people. And, um, and if you're sick, call right away to your health care provider to get care. Great. Thank you, Barbara. Certainly appreciate that. Um, like I said, we are fortunate to have Barbara uh, here to have all those communications. And I want to say um, thank you publicly to our community leaders uh, from the county judge, the county commissioners, um, our Montgomery County Public Health District, which I happen to serve as a board member at the Montgomery County Public Health District. Um, they have been wonderful in providing us with information. And when we do get the opportunity to come back, I'm going to be optimistic when I say that I do hope and, and and pray that we do get to come back to school um, on April 13th. They'll be instrumental in helping us to, um, to create and provide a safe learning opportunity for students when we do return. And so um, that's important. I've been taking a few questions here um, and, and I'm gonna try to run through them uh, quickly if I can. Um, first, what is the cleaning status of our schools? Uh, our schools right now are the cleanest buildings in Montgomery County. I feel very confident in saying that to you. Um, we started our cleaning program before spring break started, uh, and it continued during spring break when we had no one, in, no one in the building. So all of our buildings, every classroom, every bus has been e-misted um, with an approved um, chemical that does kill the COVID-19 virus. And so right now, our buildings are, are very clean. Now, what we do all understand is as soon as you bring people into those buildings, they are no longer clean. And that's part of the challenge we have as we make those decisions moving forward. Um, it's like a question maybe from a high school student. What about AP testing? That's a great question. Um, 
We're not in charge of AP testing. That comes directly from the College Board. We have reached out to College Board today. Um, and because this has affects so many students, when you think about all of the students in the Houston area, and I would not be surprised um, to see you know, the other regions of the state follow the lead of the Houston region, um, there'll be millions of students impacted with AP testing throughout the country. And so we will wait on College Board to give us guidance on potentially rescheduling or making up those, um, those tests. But for AP students, it's really important. You do need to get that material. And I know um, in my own house, my daughter is in an AP course and she's already been receiving um, materials from her AP teachers. Um, it is really important that we continue to prepare you to make sure you get that college credit that you've been working so hard for um, all year long. Um, what is the impact on the last day of school? Great question. Are we making, are we going to have to make up all of these days and will it impact next year's calendar? All of the information I've received thus far tells me no, that those things will not happen. Uh, our last day of school will, will continue to be um, what it is scheduled to be this year and, and next year's calendar will be what it will be. Um, I, I caution you a little bit and, and really almost everything that I say tonight is things have changed so rapidly that anything could change. But right now, every indication that I've received from TEA is that we will not have to make up these days. They have stressed to us what I am stressing tonight to you and what we'll be stressing to our instructional staff over these next few days is that we want to teach students while we're out of school. You know, it will look differently. It's not going to be a normal school day, but we want to do everything we can to make uh, these next few weeks as, an, as much of an instructional days as we can. Um, let's see. Um, Will students be able to go to school to get books and materials before April 10th? That is very likely. So as we talk about this week, we are in a closed situation where our buildings are closed and we do not have staff on campus. Uh, as we move into next week, that changes. We'll have all our employees will be back on duty. Once again, some of them may be in the buildings working, others may be working remotely, but, but our buildings will be functioning um, a little more than they are today. At that point, principals can have communication with you uh, and we may be able to find opportunities for students to come up and uh, pick up those books or, or materials that they may need to help them with their learning. Um, that'll be coordinated by your campuses and it'll be a, a very organized um, system because we don't want to have a system where we bring a lot of students into the building at once. Know that if we do bring students into the building, let's say for, for any given day, um, we bring in a grade level and allow them to pick up their books, we will e miss that building again that night to make sure that that building is once again uh, safe and protected. That's our promise to you. Um, are we going to do more food distributions? Absolutely. So tomorrow is our first distribution and we are scheduled to go again on Thursday. We set that schedule uh, when we thought we would be closed for one week. Now that we know that we're gonna have multiple weeks of closure, we will adjust the schedule moving forward. Now, our plan for um, this week is to give multiple meals on both Tuesday and Thursday. And we see that as a convenience factor for families so that you don't have to come up every single day to get meals. And so we will uh, most likely try to continue that trend, but we will set schedules out into the future um, here very shortly. We'll learn a lot tomorrow, I will tell you. Um, this is another thing that is new for us. It'll be our first time tomorrow. Um, we will do the best we can to manage that situation. We've tried to think through it the best we could, but we'll learn a lot tomorrow and we'll make adjustments for Thursday and then we'll learn again on Thursday and then that will help us set the schedule and make our plan for um, the following uh, weeks. How will this affect UIL activities? So far, the UIL has already canceled uh, all activities through March. So um, for families that may not know, if you have younger children, UIL is the sanctioning body for all athletics and fine arts in public schools in Texas. And so they have already canceled all activities. Um, they have given us indication that they will likely be extending that. So during this closure, all UIL activities are, um, are closed. So there'll be no practice, no games um, during this closure. We will look for guidance from the UIL um, when we return to school, once again, hopefully in April, uh, as to how they may want to address the soccer, baseball, um, softball, track, those seasons that are, are not yet complete, we will, we will have to take our guidance from them on those areas. Um, 
there are a lot of resources that will be coming to you online. And hopefully, um, if you're joining us tonight, you have access. Maybe it's just via your phone. Maybe you have a computer at home. Um, but we'll be, we'll be sending many resources to you. We would encourage you to share those with maybe friends that you have that aren't online. Um, we will have teachers and schools calling families to make sure they can access those resources. And if they can't, we will be making arrangements to help them get access to those. Uh, but know that there's going to be a flood of information coming. And I, I also want to kind of... Uh, caution you as, as I've cautioned some of our folks is we don't want to add stress and burden to you uh, at this time and I understand teaching your children at home can be a big stressor in your house for your family uh, so we're going to try to provide you with all the information you need without overwhelming you and overwhelming your child um, to the point where you reach a level of frustration and they do as well and it becomes a counterproductive situation in your home um, so we're going to do our best to temper what we do and really be strategic about what we provide and ask um, of your students. Um, I think that is, is going to wrap up for tonight. I just want to remind you of this. Um, we didn't expect this, but we're going to get through this. Uh, we have a great community. We have uh, all the resources that we could ever need as a community. If we do get sick, we're blessed to have wonderful hospitals that are here to take care of us. But we have a loving and caring community that will wrap their arms around anybody that is struggling at this time. I know that, I've seen it, and I trust it. So as Barbara said, please stay calm. Now is not the time to panic. This is not what we expected to do. This is, this is not normal school. But we're going to make it our new normal for the next few weeks, and we're going to make it great. Uh, I hope that you and your family stay safe. You have all that you need. If there's anything that we can do for your family, communicate to, to the campus. And if it's not a resource that we can provide you, we can try to help get you to a resource in the community that can. We will have another uh, Facebook Live opportunity here in the next few days. We'll get that scheduled. We'll post it on our page. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the curriculum in our next Facebook Live. And I'll also, we'll have someone here from our guidance and counseling department to talk to us about how to deal with the stress of these situations as adults for us, but also maybe how do you deal and work with your children that may be stressed out from what they hear on the news or that they feel the stress that we feel as parents and adults. So that'll be the focus of our next Facebook Live. Uh, that will come out very soon. And then in the future, we will have Facebook Live opportunities and videos that we will be producing that will be more directed to your children. It may be us reading books or doing science experiments and different activities as that, but we will make very clear when we make a Facebook Live posting if the intended audience is for the adults or if it's for students so that we don't, we don't mix and mingle those things that um, we wanna share directly to you as parents. So thank you once again. Um, we wish you all the best and more information to come soon. Thank you.